So in this web dev tip, I'm going to quickly explain to you what the browser list property is in the package.json file. So this is a special uh, package that's used by certain other packages to work out which browsers you're trying to target with your front end application. So you might have seen something like this in your package.json file before. Uh, and what this is telling the actual package and other tools that might be installed in it is what versions you're trying to actually target in terms of browsers around the world. So this is an open source project that's used by lots of other libraries, uh, including like our previous web dev tips, the parcel bundler tool. And what parcel will use this for is to work out how it should handle your source code and whether it needs to transpile your JavaScript into earlier versions of JavaScript so that your code works across all the browsers that you're targeting. So it's not uncommon to see something like this uh, where we're targeting any browser which the browser list package doesn't consider to be dead and we want to target the last few versions and any browser that's not considered in the minority, so 0.2% of most popular browsers. So that's pretty much all the browser list property does. Uh, there are other options that you can put in here as well. Uh, they recommend on the uh, GitHub project that you should just go with uh, defaults, for example. And the browser list package will select the most suitable browsers uh, for that particular time. If you do go over to the uh, browser list uh, GitHub repo, uh, you should see there's some more information about how uh, the package works and, and what uh, other packages it works with uh, and you can find uh, some examples of how you might want to configure it and some of the special rules that you can use for example if you don't want to target internet explorer within your code so check out the github repository if you want some more information about the types of rules that you can put into the browser list property so that's it for this tutorial stay tuned for more web dev tips